Today's projects will give you tips on how to incorporate fabric to create one-of-a-kind home decor pieces. I hope you enjoy, and if you haven't subscribed already, I would love for you to, and become part of our crafting community. For our first project, we'll be using one of Dollar Tree's small wall shelves. This comes with two pieces of wood, so this will be our first and second project in today's video. If you can't find these small shelves, you could always use a scrap piece of wood. The possibilities are endless. I took some antique wax and watered it down just a little bit to create a nice stain. I'm going to go over this entire piece, including the outside edges, and then I'm going to take a lint-free cloth and wipe it down. It's going to blend it in and then remove any of the excess. You'll want to let that thoroughly dry because then we're going to take some Mod Podge and apply a thin layer just over over the top of the board and let that dry as well. Dollar Tree carries fabric in a variety of different colors and patterns. If you cannot find these rolls in the Crafter Square section, make sure to check out the plus section. They usually have seasonal bundles. I'm going to measure the distance between all of the holes on the board so that I can cut my fabric down to size. I do want it to cover up those holes. I'm going to initially cut that down a little bit larger using a Dollar Tree rotary blade because I also want to iron it and make sure I get all of the wrinkles out. Then I'll trim it down to the exact size I need. I didn't want the edges to be perfectly straight, so I'm going to pull a few strands out of each side. It's going to give it this gorgeous frayed look. Now that we have allowed our Mod Podge to dry, we can adhere our fabric to our wood piece using a small iron and going over it just enough to reactivate that Mod Podge. It's going to heat up and seal our fabric directly to the wood. I wanted to see if we would be able to use some of Dollar Tree's rub on transfers and transfer this over to the fabric. So I'm going to cut a few pieces out and lay out my design, just kind of playing around with it to see where I want these pieces to be. If you've never used these rub on transfers before, you peel the backing off and then you go over it with a scraper or anything with a flat edge, apply a little bit of pressure, and this worked out perfectly. Look how beautiful that is. So I'm going to add the other two leaf pieces that I chose for this design. And once you have those in place, you may want to go over it with a very thin layer of Mod Podge just to protect those rub on transfers from coming off. But I am very impressed with the detail and how well these adhere to the fabric. In Dollar Tree's office section, I found these gorgeous velvet push pins, and I thought they would be perfect to put in the holes for this project. However, the push pins are a little long and they stick out the back of the wood. So I'm going to take some tin snips and snip the very ends off of each of those. Then I can attach this to the sign using some hot glue. You could create a hanger on the back to hang it up or use some command strips. I want mine to sit up, so I'm going to hot glue a tumbling tower piece to the back. For this project, we're going to use that other piece of wood that came in that shelf kit. We're going to stain it just like we previously did, let that dry, apply some Mod Podge and let that dry. And I thought that this green fabric would look beautiful up against that wood. We're going to do all the things just like we did in our previous project. But instead of using the rub on transfers, I wanted to try out Dollar Tree's clear stamps. I found this kit, it's a 12 piece set, and I'm going to use one of their black ink pads. They also had a red and green. I'm going to play around with the placement to see exactly how I want them to be. And I wasn't too sure how much detail would come out. So I'm going to try that on the back of the packaging first. And I was very impressed at how much detail these stamps have. 
To make sure I was able to get all of the outside edges, I used a tumbling tower piece to push that down into the ink pad. That just kept the ink from getting all over my fingertips. After you've pressed it down onto your fabric, to keep it from smudging, you'll want to pull it straight up. And then I'm going to continue to do that for the other two butterflies, adding them to this fabric. I think this is turning out so pretty. You could use the velvet push pins just like we did in our previous project, but if you can't find those, if you have some half beads, they would work just as well. I am gonna use those velvet push pins after I clip all of the ends off. I'll hot glue each one of those down and add a tumbling tower piece to the back so it will stand up. We will be using one of those chalkboard house shape signs from Dollar Tree, and we're gonna add a layer of Mod Podge just on that chalkboard part in the front. You really want to make sure that you get a good amount on the edges. And then I'm using this fabric, I believe it came from Timu. I'm gonna cut it down slightly larger than the sign itself. And then we'll apply that to the wet Mod Podge. Then we're going to go over it with a layer of Mod Podge. Again, we're going to make sure that we really get those edges because when you trim it, you don't want those edges to peel up. And I like to work from one side to the other, and that's going to push all of those air bubbles out. Then we're going to set it to the side and we're going to let it dry for at least two hours. Using a utility knife or an X-Acto knife, very carefully go around all of the inside edges to remove that excess fabric. You may have to tug on it just a little bit since that Mod Podge has sealed it to the sides. And if you have a little piece that wants to come up like I do here at the very top, you can just add a little bit more Mod Podge under it and then on top of it and let it dry. This project is finished, and even though this project was fairly simple, I think the pattern on this fabric is so pretty and fitting for this piece. I'm using a wooden cross from Hobby Lobby, but you can find wooden crosses at Dollar Tree, Walmart, or even Family Dollar. I will be giving this one coat of white paint on all sides. Now that the paint has dried, I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge only to the top and set that to the side and let it dry. The fabric I'll be using for this project came from Dollar Tree in their plus section in one of those bundles where you get like four or five pieces of fabric for five dollars. I'm going to iron all of the wrinkles out. Now that the Mod Podge is dried, I'm going to trim the fabric down slightly larger than the cross. Then we can add this on top using that small iron and that's going to heat up that Mod Podge and seal the fabric to the cross. Once you've allowed it to cool down, you can use an X-Acto knife or a utility knife and trim off the excess fabric as close as you can. The corners you may have to do a couple of times to make sure that you're able to get that extra fabric off. You will have some strands that are hanging off of the side and to get a nice clean line, I'm using a fine grit sandpaper and very gently going around that just to remove those. It is going to come out so beautiful and crisp. It will distress the top of the fabric just a little bit it, but I really like that look. To keep the fabric from fraying any further, I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge to the top and allow it to dry. 
then we can embellish it. I'm going to be using a burlap flower sticker from Dollar Tree and hot gluing that right to the center. And I also have some beautiful paper flowers from Hobby Lobby that I decided to add one right in the center of the burlap flower. Now my cross has a place where you can hang it up on the back, but I am going to hot glue a tumbling tower piece so that it will be able to stand up. And then I'm going to touch that up with some white paint so it looks like it was meant to be there. For this project, we're using one of Dollar Tree's wooden trays. This comes in their plus section. I previously made a DIY with this, so I've already pre-stained it and wrapped the handles with twine. If you would like to see that video, I'll leave it in the cards up above. I'm going to apply a very generous amount of Mod Podge to the bottom of the tray. I found a beautiful placemat at Dollar General for $2. I absolutely love the design on this and think it would be perfect for this tray. I'm going to iron most of the creases and wrinkles out and then I'm going to take one of Dollar Tree's rotary blades and trim the ends off a little bit longer than the inside bottom of the tray. Then I'll cut the sides down using this same rotary blade. The Mod Podge is not completely dry and that's okay. We're going to place our placemat in the bottom, push it up to the inside edges as far as you can, and then taking that mini iron, go over this to seal that Mod Podge. Once it has cooled down, take Mod Podge and go over the inside edges only, saturate them, and don't worry if you get any wrinkles, we'll work that out later, but you definitely want to make sure that this Mod Podge has dried before we go to our next step. Using a utility knife or X-Acto knife, trim this to the inside edge as close as possible. You may have to do the corners a couple of times to make sure you get a nice clean cut. And the reason we had to make sure that Mod Podge completely dried is because as you're doing this, you don't want the inside of your placemat to peel up. Then you can gently pull the excess fabric off. I'm using my mini vacuum to remove any of the loose fibers before we seal this piece in. We'll be sealing it with a layer of Mod Podge over the entire top part of the placemat. This is going to allow me to easily wipe this off. After drying for several hours, you may see some bubbles pop up in the middle. Lay a piece of parchment paper down and then iron over top of your parchment paper. That way the layer of Mod Podge on top of your placemat will not adhere to your iron. Once cooled down, it is ready for you to style and decorate your home with. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found tons of inspiration and if you have a favorite let me know in the comment section down below. Did you know that we have a Facebook and Instagram page? We would love for you to follow us over there too. If you would like to see more fabric hacks I recommend watching this video next. 
Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.